All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we will be learning how to validate user entry on the login screen part. Like I said before, if you haven't watched any of these videos, I encourage you, highly, highly encourage you to check out the whole video so that way you guys could be all caught up on all these things that we are building. If you just just joining us, I encourage you to go check out the previous video. It has a lot of different information that you guys can use for your own projects. And with that said, let's move on. So in this particular training video, we'll be learning how to validate it. Like I said before, if someone puts in their email address, uh, is the first of all, the first check will be, is the email address format the way it's supposed to be? Meaning a name, an ad symbol, and then the domain name. Are all those, are all three fields included? If not, then we want to show users a error message saying, hey, this is not valid. You should check your email. First one. Second one is to say, check whatever entry they put it in there and check to see if those entry match up with the database. If it, they do, then we want them to give, then we want to give them a download page where they can download their stuff that we wanted to do. In this case, it's their ebook. So let me show you what I mean. Like for example, if I just go in there and then I will type in a wrong email address first, not a valid one. I'm just gonna type in blah, 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 and then and then hit enter key. It's gonna say, hey, this is not a valid email address, buddy. And then I'm gonna type in gmail.com. This is also, that's the first check is to saying this is not the correct format on the front end side. The second check is going to be, does this email match with the, in the what's in the database? So I'm gonna hit enter now. And then it's gonna say, hey, this particular one does not exist. So I'm gonna delete this. And now I'm gonna enter in the right one, like we talked about in a previous video. And right now I typed in the right credentials. Now I should be able to see my download page. And then voila, there we go. And this is what we are going to be going over next. Okay, so let's go on. And I'm gonna close this out. Actually, I'm gonna open up the JS login part of it. All right. Like I said before, if you're just joining us, check out the previous videos so this will all make sense to you. And then you would be like, oh, I know what I'm saying as compared to, I have no idea what they're talking about. Or if you don't wanna do it, just follow through it. Basically, uh, we'll be going through everything that I showed you earlier. So in this case, what we are doing is we are putting in the enter code, as I said in the previous video, which I got from the awesome function library is all the way at the end. Basically what this allows you to do is you just go in here and this is enter key. And it's under awesome functions lib.com library. And then basically what this allows you to do is it will allow you to enter in, uh, hit the enter key in any particular field. And then it will allow you to go whatever that you want you to do. In this case, what I wanted to do is I want, when whenever person enters in, uh, hit the enter key when they're uh, in a particular field, input field, in this case, this particular input field has a login form class, then I want to see if the person enters an enter there, and then I wanna uh, redirect that uh, action to go to uh, the click event. In this case, this is the login button. All right. So first thing, what this particular validation process does is it grabs the email address and the password, and then it also clears out any and all all the old error message that displayed as you saw before. And then it's gonna check to say, hey, is the password an empty? Meaning is something in the password field. If it's not nothing in there, then show enter password. So just to show you, let me 
I'm always a farmer leaver. I would rather show you so that way you can visually see it rather than me telling you, you take my word for it. So if I go in here and then hit enter, it's gonna say, hey, password, because that's the validation that I had before. And then same thing for the email. And then it's gonna say invalid. This is what I mean when I go here. So first check to see if it's empty. If it is empty, hey, tell them to enter the password and then do the same thing for the email first. And then I'm just moving my mic. So the next it's going to uh, check to see if the email is va valid and then followed by it's going to go ahead and put it this form data so to speak and then there's a call type which is a variable and then password is also a variable so is the email and then i'm kind of cheating i am not using the proper uh, ajax like a traditional version i'm just using the post variable uh, function which is shorter sweeter so from here we will go to our uh, my ajax.php file so if I scroll down to the next process, which is login, this is the function of the variable that I have set it up in here is call call type, and the call type is in login. So basically what I'm saying is, hey, is this call type set? If it's set, is it equal to login? If it is, then do the rest of the stuff. And then what I'm doing is I'm grabbing each one of these, uh, the name and the, I mean, not the name, rather, the email and the password. I'm grabbing the values of those. And then I'm running it through clean DB function. This function allows us to prevent any and all SQL injection, injections that happen. And then I'm hashing the password here because it's always a good idea to hash the password. And then what I'm gonna do is, the next part is go to my database here and say, hey, go to this particular user table and see if the email, which is in this case is the user email, equal to the field, whatever the person puts it in. And then do the same thing for the password. And the reason why I'm hashing the password here in the previous video, like I said, on the sign up form, I have hashed the password to store in the, in the table. So therefore I need to hash it again, whatever the person enters in. So that way I can compare the two hashes to see if they match rather than storing the password as a, so for example, uh, if the person enters in a, a password as a one, two, three, I don't want to store it as a one, two, three. I want to store it as X, Y, alpha, blah, Joe, symbols, and all that other crap that happens when you hash it. And then if it finds a record, meaning it finds the information based on those two criteria, which is the email and password, if it cannot find it, then it's going to throw an error message saying, hey, there is no email found. However, if it did find it, then it's going to go to the further process of activating the, if the, then next what it will do is it will check to see, hey, it's going to grab all these variables based on the table. So let me go back in here. As I said, I'm a firm believer in uh, showing rather than just telling. So in this case, what it's doing is it's going to say, hey, is a user uh, email, which is right here, does this match what person entered in? Okay, great. Does the password match what person entered in? Great. Now what I want you to do is, let's go back in here. I want you to grab the activation status. In this case, it will be right here, user status. All right. Okay. And then it's going to grab the email ID, <clears throat> user ID, and name. And then what it's going to do next is say, hey, is this particular email active? Meaning person 
clicked on the email that they got to activate the account. If they didn't, <clears throat> then this one will just die out. And I left the other two functionalities out there for you guys to work it out the way you want to work it. Because typically what I will do is, let me go back to my screen here. So let's say, for example, if I refresh it, let's say, for example, I signed up for this form. Behind scenes, as I said before, the first status when someone signs up is going to be pending. If I sign up, rather than me go into my email, I just go right into the login part. And I want to log in. I will leave that up to you how you want to proceed it. What I want to do is I want to check to see if the status is, first of all, active. If it's not active, then I want to send my user an email and tell them, hey, you need to go click on this link that I sent you in the email to activate it. And then I'm kind of forcing them to go open the email in their email. Otherwise, anyone could just log in without activating their account. Or another case scenario will be your code will fail if you don't have that check because you're always looking for active account but the if the person fails to click on the email, they will never get to the next process, which is logging in. So you have to tell your users, hey, you didn't click on the email I sent you, so I sent you another one. Please go click on it so you can, you can log in. Otherwise, person doesn't know. And obviously, this is hypothetically speaking, but and as a web developer, you always want to think of all the possible things can a person do to make your code not work? This is what I typically do. I always think of all the worst case scenarios, all the possibilities that could go wrong. So that way, every time I build my code or my uh, my web projects, they're last. They're built to last for at least three to five years without breaking ever. Saying a lot, but that's something what I like to do. I love programming. If you haven't caught that by now, but anyway, let's move on. So it's going to check to see if it's activated. If it is activated, meaning the person clicked on the link, then it's going to redirect them to the download page where they can go and download it. All right, so let's look at the download page next. So if I open this up. So at the download page, we're including this so we can go and talk to our database kind of thing. And then it goes and sets the session. Actually, let me go back in here just to explain the session part. So after it finds the status to be active, it has been activated, and then it's going to set the session, meaning cookie in PHP. And then it's going to set the session. I'm setting it for three different variables, but you can set it for just one user ID or email or whatever. I'm setting it for all three of them. And then in my download full of file, I am this is how you initiate the session if you want to grab the information and then i'm going to check to see hey is the user id cookie so to speak session in php is what they call it is a set if it's not set redirect the person to the URL that you want to redirect. In this case, I just have it going back to the sign up page. And then obviously you can uh, comment this out and tell the person, hey, you cannot directly access this page or whatever you want. Rather than me showing that, I'm just directly redirecting them to the URL. And then it says, hey, else if it is set, then it's going to completely ignore this code at all. Then it's going to move on to the next set, which be, which in this case, what it will do is it will, from the session, it's going to go grab the email ID and username. And then I have this basic, very basic page says, hey, welcome, whatever the name of the person is, and then download. Thank you for your purchase. Plain, simple. And that's that. All right. Let me show you. As I said before, I'm a firm believer in showing rather than telling. 
So if I go into login now, and then I'm gonna do everything wrong. I'm not gonna put the right email address and format and then wrong everything just to show you what exactly we talked about in the last 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go in here, say blah, 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 tab out, blah, 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 and then hit the enter key. As you see, it validates it on the front end side. Then I'm gonna type in the wrong email address. Now I wanna validate it on the database side of things and the password to be whatever. Okay, it tells me it's not a valid email because you cannot have uh, apostrophe in the email that is not allowed in any email system. So it still does the front end side. So now I'm gonna say, next check is the database to say, hey, can't find your information, buddy. What you doing? Now I'm gonna type in the right one, one, gmail.com and the right password and then there you go this is what we just talked about earlier you type in the right information you get this page if you don't and however if it's like for example somebody gets the whole of your download page and so like oh I already got your download URL I don't need your stuff I can get it for free you know well here's the thing so let's clear the session cookie so if I right click on Chrome and then Go to inspect, just to show you again. Right click, inspect, or you could do control shift I, one or the other, and then go under application. As of right now, this is what they have it under. By the time you might be watching in the next month, two months, three years, whatever, this might be different. But nonetheless, figure out where the cookies are stored. And under the cookie section, this is called PHP session ID. If you delete this particular one or and right now, then there will be, if I refresh it, there is no cookie. And then what it should do is it will redirect to the home page. In this case will be the sign up. So let me go back to my code and up top, this is the code that will do the redirecting. Like I said before. If it says, hey, user ID session exists, great. Then do the rest. If it does not exist, then redirect them. All right, so let me close this out. So as you just saw, I logged in before I got this page, but if someone goes to uh, give this URL to somebody else, it's gonna say, if I refresh it, it's gonna take them back to here. So it does have functionality built in for some security. All right, so with that said, I'm going to conclude this video. In the next video, we will be learning how to do the password reset. So this is the screen that we will be looking at next. I will see you guys in the next video.